So I went to this Chinese event today. Uh-oh, get ready. Every time I talk about the experiences and the struggles of a black transgender woman learning Chinese, everyone loses their shit. But I am in the end of my second semester learning Chinese and um, so I said I like um, speaking Chinese, I like studying Chinese, and I also wrote a um, Chinese song recently. But, um, Zijin. <laughs> but, um, this video is probably gonna lag because I, I, I really don't know. Like, it's been giving me hell just trying to record. This is the umpteenth time I tried to record this video. But I went to this Chinese event today at the clock tower uh, at my university. And um, it's a predominantly white institution, as I've said before. And... I heard these people speaking what seemed to be Chinese, you know, being a person who's taking Chinese. I mean, I am in my first year, so I don't know. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I always know Chinese when I hear it or whatever, you know, because they may not have been speaking Chinese, which is what they came to tell me after I started trying to speak Chinese with them. And they looked at me like I had done the worst thing in the world. And I'm sure you all can already imagine what the offense, the alleged offense was in that situation that caused them to treat me with such disrespect. And it was, um, I'm assuming, that they thought that I was thinking because of their aesthetics that they were Chinese, when it was really because of what they were speaking. So the way it sounded, it sounded to me like it was chi Chinese, you know, a person who's not as familiar as, you know, someone who would know, who knows, who's been taking Chinese for more than a year, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, no, but anyway, or however I was supposed to word that, I don't remember, but, well, you know, it was just ridiculous. So then this girl who was, it was two guys and a girl. The girl who was with them was like, oh, okay, so um, um, I speak a little Chinese. You know, she, you know, she was like, I speak Chinese, and you know, this, that, and the third, she said, but, but we're Korean. And she said it in kind of like a, you know, fake kind of Becky kind of way. Like she was correcting me. And I'm just like, okay, look, if you speak Chinese, then let's speak Chinese. Like, I mean, what, 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 what's the situation? So we're speaking Chinese for a second, or at least so I think is about to happen. I say, um, which is, I can speak Chinese. That is valid. That is proper. That is what I learned in my Chinese class from my Chinese professor. Why did this girl sit here and try to tell me that I wasn't speaking proper Chinese? She kept looking at me sideways, crooked, and all this other, you know, the same thing that I told my, um, that my foster, my uh, old white foster dad told me they wouldn't be doing, you know, people who um, speak Chinese wouldn't dare, you know, why would you just assume that people would just be pretending that you're not uh, pretending not to understand you or what, what have you. Now, I do understand that there are tones. There are four tones. There are only four. But it, it does cause a lot of trouble when you're trying to learn Chinese when you don't know, when you don't use tones in your own language. You know what I'm saying? Like, you use tones, but, like, the tones we use in America are, like, implied. So it's honestly even more difficult because the tone changes depending on what you're saying with the same words. Whereas the tone with their words, it's just the same as it's supposed to be. If it's a specific word, it's always going to sound a specific way. So it's just ridiculous. So like, it doesn't matter where it is in the sentence. It doesn't matter um, where it falls in the sentence. It doesn't matter, um, 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 you know, um, it doesn't matter... Uh, all of the other things. But anyway, so that happened. And then one of the dudes caught me a bitch because, and I'm sure it was because I muddled, mum, mumbled under my breath. So this is why bitches don't say nothing to people because, and don't want to, you know, converse with people because situations go like this. Because what happened, so that situation happened with the girl. And then the way it ended was she was basically just trying to shut me up by giving me this, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. 
response when I started to speak Chinese. And you know, you can tell when somebody doesn't want to hear you speak, you know what I'm saying? And they're rushing you to say what you haven't even said yet. You know what I'm saying? Like you've started to say the first letter of a, of a word and, and they're already like, uh-huh, yeah, okay. So it was, it was that, it was a lot of that. And then I get to the front. Oh, so, so after I made that comment, one of them said something in uh, another language, I'm assuming Korean. Um, and dressed that dressed up the word bitch in this sentence that was fully in another language except the bitch. So I knew that they were calling me a bitch. I didn't say anything. I just, you know, kept it cool. But I did start recording, even though that didn't do much. Although I did catch this situation between me and this uh, vendor who um, so there were vendors from Northeastern Asia as well. And I went to go get two plates that I had worked for. I had done the activities. I got my things. It was time to do the plates or whatever. And then, um, or get some food. And I ordered two plates with my tickets. And they skipped right over me like I wasn't even saying. I was over there trying to learn how to say the name of the dish. And I was trying to learn how to speak in Korean to say thank you for the food because apparently it was Korean food. All this other shit. And what do you call it? They um, skipped my ass. So I'm just standing there waiting for my food. And I keep looking over and I keep looking over. I see Becky, Jimmy, Johnny, all of them get their food. You know what I'm saying? All these white people get their food and I'm standing there. So like five, six people later, they finally are like, you know, oh, could you get her food ready? And then they gave me some crumbs. And then um, there were some other things that happened as well, but it was just a very uh, unfortunate experience. And it's just like, this is the type of stuff that I'll be talking about. This is the type of stuff that is consistently happening. Like, you know, my teacher wonders why I'm not, you know, um, um, uh, why the whole class is not, you know, learning as quickly as we could be. It's because these bitches are antisocial. And my ass, who has every reason above them to be antisocial because I know that they will not accept me, is actually actively putting herself out there while everybody else is acting fucking squeamish. And especially with me. So this is the problem that I have because I can't, I can learn a language all day if I want to, but if I don't have anyone to speak it with because people don't like me, then what the fuck use is it? You know what I'm saying? Which is going to be good use. You know, I'll be able to represent people in Chinese and this, that, and the third, but it's just like, what the hell? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'd be talking about, you know? And I sent my professors a, a, a message and let them know, you know, let me read this last message that I sent to them because I sent them a few things. But this last one is, uh, well, the second last one is um, the one that um, I think is most pertinent. And it's just basically, so it reads... Professors, I also just want to paint a picture for you all. One of the biggest problems I faced at this university, and I spoke a bit uh, about this with the woman who ran the booth today, a great pleasure to be around and one of the only people I've met outside of my class who is actually seemingly a nice person, is the fact that a lot of these students are not as angelic as they are treated by a lot of the administrators. You all don't see how these people treat me in the hallways on a regular basis. I am hazed, taunted, and laughed at on a regular basis. It takes tremendous courage to leave my house every day and go to class. I don't get off days where I get to look a mess because when that happens, I go through even more when it comes to the vitriol and overall abuse. I mention this because I feel that I am entitled to do so with how well I am constrained while attending university at this predominantly white institution. I mean that to posit that every reaction I give to my bully is in need of a ma of major calculation before presentation lest I invite disciplinary action my privilege cannot withstand as much as most of the white students in this institution. I have tried not to get into the weeds of racism and discrimination with my professors but lately I've had to come forth with this information to more than just the two of you. I have tried to work with the school to better race relations when it comes to black Americans and much work needs to be done when it comes to gender relations unfortunately the school does not seem to be up for that kind of work alas I am left to make do and suffer this the best I can.